back, everybody. This time we've got Michael Mayer, Tara Carter, and Paul Dominic. Paul, did I mess up your last name or was it right on? Oh, you're muted. Hold on. Let me unmute you, my friend. Jake, can you unmute? Oh, there it is. Thanks, bud. It is Dominic. Oh, Dominic. There it like is. Like the Dominator. I love it. So today we've got Michael Mayer, and he's got something special for us. So, Michael, I'm going to let you talk on this one, man, because this is all you. Well, I appreciate that, and, and uh, I'm, I'm excited about today. Uh, I want to talk about something that may surprise your viewers and listeners. I, I want to talk about testicles. I love that. Is that, is that all right if we just start with testes? Why not, dude? Just let us so, know this is going. So we're gonna just we're gonna start with testicles. Yeah. So everybody, you know, here's the thing: if quizzes are quizzical, then are tests really testicles, right? So here's the thing, right? Is that uh, studies have shown that when it comes to sleep, that men who get seven hours of sleep have bigger balls than those who only get five hours of sleep. Who knew that? I mean, like, <laughs> no that's wonder. Great, like who's <laughs> like studying it. that, right? So, so here's the thing, right? Is that, and also, and, and that is kind of a microcosm of everything I want to talk about today. And I have to tell you, Tristan, I'm on fire about this. I am on fire about this. Is that, so I, and, and the title of today is The Simple Secret to Health, Wealth, and Happiness. I truly believe I found it. Like, here's the thing is, did you know that heart attacks go up? Oh, by the way, I have a way to prevent heart attacks. Guess what it is? What? We're going to stop daylight savings time. Did you know that in the spring, when we get one last hour of sleep, heart mm -hmm. attacks actually just go up by 24%. I didn't know that. Did you know that when we fall forward, in, or I'm sorry, fall back in the fall, we get one more hour of sleep, and guess what happens? Heart attacks go down 21%. Wow. So here's the thing, right, is I am here to speak about a superpower that I have discovered over the last few years, and especially the last few months, and it is the power of sleep. How do we maximize something that we do eight hours a day, or hopefully at least seven hours a day. And just so you know, the whole testicles thing is just a part of the bigger picture of what getting good sleep can do for us. I don't know if you know it, but they think that with appropriate amount of sleep, we might be able to cure Alzheimer's. We might be able to cure dementia. We might be able to cure cancer. We might be able to cure heart disease. All of those can be traced back to sleep deprivation. Now, on the flip side, sleeping in can cause devastation as well. We really want to be in the sweet spot of six to eight hours a day. When I started with the quarantine, when we got the stay-at-home order, what happened was I said, mess or success? Do we want this time to be a mess or do we want this time to be a success? And Success was an acronym, and the first S of success was structure. Well, guess what? The number one thing that we could have done to remain successful between the time that we got stay-at-home orders and the all-clear is sounded is go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time. You want to talk about structure, that's structure. Well, what if we've discovered that by going bed at, to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time, it would also make the rest of our day more effective. So today, I want to talk about how do we maximize sleep, not how would you like to go to bed no longer dreaming about your worries and your problems, but and yet you actually go to dream and solve problems. And that's what I want to talk about today is how do we really have sweet dreams. And I mean sweet dreams that propel us forward every single day. And I'm going to talk about how to do that. Are you okay with that, Tristan? I'm 100% on board, buddy. I love, I love sleeping. I think it's the key to, to so much. So that's beautiful. Awesome. Well, I also want to make sure that 
everybody understands here that I've got Tara Carter in here as well. Uh, Tara is the source of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. She is on the great Florida homes team. She is awesome. And here's the thing is I'm going to talk about the Sunday night ritual. In fact, I'm going to help everybody remember it because I'm going to give them an acronym for it. And here's the thing is I have a lot of CRTs, 85 CRTs, but how do you present? How do you actually get to be a certified referral trainer and present? You implement. Tara has implemented the Sunday night ritual at a very high level, and we're going to get to hear from her about her Sunday night ritual so you can see not just how I'm doing it, but also how other really, really productive people are doing it. So Tara, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And then and we I have, just wanna, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 I just wanted to, you, never mind. I just remembered you did clarify what CRT is. So oh, thank you. Yeah, certified referral trainer. And I also know that, that Tara is someone that a lot of the lab code agents know very well. She's a moderator. She's an admin. She is one of the best participants in the entire 120,000 person ecosystem. And um, she has, has led a lot of sessions and a lot of us through housewarming parties and and other things and, and been just a great leader, uh, kind of a rising star, but you can't even say that about her anymore. She's really a star, you know, now she's just a star, right? So, uh, and then I have Polly Dominich, who might be a new face for a lot of people in the lab coat group, because you know what? He's too stinking busy to be worried about <laughs> all the other things that are going on on social media and everything else. But this guy has gone from zero to hundred transactions in four years. And uh, he's out of Destin, Florida. And you can't spell destiny without Destin. And his destiny was Destin, Florida. And uh, this guy has a destiny and has a, a talk about a rising star. You're going to see his face much more often in the, in the future. So, Polly, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here and to share what I do as far as my nightly ritual that has helped me succeed, not only in real estate, but in life in general, and just creating that mindset and those not necessarily habits, but definitely making sure that, um, you know, you are capturing what you need to do the next day prior to actually having to do it so that you don't actually have that stress and that decision fatigue right before you actually have to do it. The secret to the night is getting it all squared away so that you could take a cold shower in the morning for 30 seconds and then just get right to it. So I'm super excited to share what I do for my nightly ritual with what Michael has put together. And I think that we're just going to do some phenomenal things for not only myself, but for the community and change lives. And that's what it's all about. I love it. You can, you can, feel, you can feel that guy's energy, right? You, you, it, and some of you are listening to this only and you're not able to see it, but trust me, you can hear his energy and his, his, his words as well. And the thing that, that you know, he's, he, listen, he's a jujitsu world champion. So I think we should, we should hear him out. Like this guy's a nightly ninja, right? So let's, let's, let's get the, the full scoop on the nightly ritual some from, from somebody who is, is literally a world champion. So I'm going to jump right into it, Tristan, and, and just go through this the Sunday night ritual first because I truly believe that it is so, so powerful. This is, here's the thing, the word proactive. Proactive is an abbreviation. Okay, I just made this up, but we're going to run with it. Proactive <laughs> is an abbreviation for professionally attractive. If you want to be more professionally attractive, if you want more people to refer you, if you want more business, if you want more great people in your life, then be proactive, which means anticipate, look ahead, and that kind of thing. So what the Sunday Night Ritual does is it forces you to look ahead. It is your weekly review from the previous week, previous week. But most importantly, it is a week in preview. You are looking at your week ahead and you are maximizing what you can do, the decisions you can make on Sunday night. So Sunday night is sweet. I try to make it easy for everybody. Z. So S is for schedule. The first thing I do, and I'm just telling you what I do. You don't have to do what I do. But you know what, you need, a, you need a Sunday night ritual and you need a nightly ritual. I'm gonna leave it at that. But I'm gonna tell you what I do, maybe it helps. Tara will uh, tell you what she does for Sunday night ritual. Polly will tell, tell you what he does with the nightly ritual. 
And guess what? The bottom line is the more you know about these rituals, the more power that you will have. Many of you know I wrote the Miracle Morning for real estate agents with Hal Elrod. Hal Elrod are, are, and I are very, very good friends. And it's one of those where the more I have taught the morning ritual, the more I have discovered that the morning really starts the night before. It is really about what you do the night. But if, if you pulled an all-nighter, your morning ritual is not going to matter. You're going to do it lethargically. You're going to have a lethargic day and probably not be as productive as you should. So it really, you re your day no longer starts at 8 a.m. It really starts at 8 or 9 p.m. the previous day. And we need to be looking at the 24 hours of 24 hours from 8 p.m. night to 8 p.m. the next day. Those are really the 24 hours that we need to look at as far as how we are maximizing our, not just our productivity, not just our career, not just our lead generation, business, whatever, but you know what, our life. And so the Sunday night ritual simply looks like this, is Sunday night, I'm gonna look at my schedule, which means looks at, look at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and I'm looking at the schedule and I'm looking for A, what's in there, and B, what's missing. And in many cases, there will be things that, that are missing. Maybe an appointment's missing, but one of the things that I'll notice is that, okay, I'm gonna be dressed up on Thursday already for a lunch. Why don't I schedule an appointment at one o'clock with, with uh, a networker, a connector, an influencer, and maybe I schedule something else at two o'clock because you know what, I'm already gonna be there. So I'm looking at the schedule to see where can I stack things. And many of you know that from 7L, habit stacking, networking stacking, these stacking of good things is a part of being super efficient and super product, uh, productive. So I'm looking at what's missing. I may already be on the phone at 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, if I'm already on the phone and in the office at 10 o'clock in the morning, maybe what I do is a one-on-one -on -one with one of my agents, or maybe I continue calls at 11 o'clock and go right up to noon with my phone calls and, and think about some other people to call. So I'm looking at the week ahead and it's like, what's missing? Then I'm going to go to the W and the W is for weather. I'm going to look at the weather for the week. Now, I also coach a lot of sports. My son plays a lot of sports. I do a lot, I mean, in fact, our entire week is in many cases weather related. Uh, maybe we're looking at events and are they gonna take place if, if the weather is bad? And the answer is probably not. So we're gonna look at the weather and do we need to pack an umbrella? Is it gonna be super hot? Do I need to wear a polo instead of a full suit and tie that day? Whatever it may be, is it gonna be appropriate? So W is for weather. I'm gonna look at the weather. The first E is for eating plan. What is your eating plan for the week? As we all know, you can't outrun your fork. And by that, what you means is no matter how much you work out, if you're not eating right, then guess what? You're, you're gonna gain weight, you're not gonna be as healthy as you can. And there are so many studies that show that if you will lay out your meals, you will eat better throughout the week. And I will tell you, COVID-19 was tough on Michael Mayer. The first two and a half weeks, I thought COVID-19 meant weight gain 19 pounds. I thought it was the COVID plus 19 challenge. I thought that's what we were all doing is, is we're gonna buy two <laughs> months of food and see if I can eat it in two weeks or less, which is exactly what I did. It, it was awful, right? So guess what? Now we're like on the eating plan. We're on the meal plan. I had turkey burger and eggs for breakfast. I had Chick-fil-A salad for lunch. Today just happened to be a day that's, that's what was planned, right? I know what I'm gonna have for dinner. I know what I'm gonna have the rest of the week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks. So it's like, how powerful is that? First of all, you're gonna eat better. The other thing is we have some workout fiends that are in the generosity generation and working out once, sometimes twice a day. Well, guess what? You gotta have mega protein within 90 minutes of your workout to maximize your workout and maximize your regrowth. And just so you know, having the protein afterwards is far less important than sleeping that night. Sleeping is where you grow muscles. 
that's where you grow muscles. It's your recovery. It's your regeneration. So eating plan. The, the next E is for exercise plan. What is your exercise plan for the week? Now, I'm going to tell you, that can be something as simple as you're going to walk every morning during your morning ritual and you're going to listen to podcasts like this one or referrals podcast, or you're going to listen to books, whatever it may be. That can be your exercise plan. Well, if that's your exercise plan, you can make decisions. You can make decisions before, like you could sleep in your walking clothes. Guess what? You know where I got that? Hal Elrod. That's where I got that idea is, is sleep in your workout clothes, wake up, put your tennis shoes on and go walk. And, and guess what? You're doing it before the, the day goes. You're already dressed. You don't have to worry about the undressed, get dressed, all that. And you've made this decision before, before everything starts going. So exercise plan. The other thing is, like I said, we, we have some bodybuilders. We have some fitness freaks. We have some great people within the generosity generation who literally Monday is going to be chest and back you know, Wednesday is leg day. Yes, we actually have people in the generosity generation who do leg day. I just want you to know I'm super proud of them. And then Friday is, is going to be uh, uh, tries and buys, right? It's, it's, you know, it's the weekend, guns out, sun's out, you know what I'm saying? So you got to do tries and buys on Friday before you go out Friday, Friday night, you know what I mean? I mean, you don't get this by just sitting around making up 30 day challenges for people, right? You got to do buys and tries on Friday. That's, that's why they call it Friday is because it's buys and tries on Friday. You didn't know that, did you? I didn't know you that. You didn't know that. You do, look at you. You can't tell me you don't do curls for the girls, Tristan Ahumada. Look at those guns. You didn't come, you didn't come today with a fleece on. Look at you, you're in a freaking short uh, sleeve so shirt. Yeah. And, and you know, what's so amazing about that is man, like literally look at the stretch on the arms in your sleeves. You're like, don't flex. You're going to rip it. I might rip yeah. it. Yeah. Listen, I'm sun's charging out, for the show, dude. You know, <laughs> I, I, you know what? I did some curls right before I did this. People think I'm on like drugs and cocaine and things like I'm high on life, man. I don't need it. Right. I mean, I can't even imagine me on drugs. Can you? That would uh, be I don't, I don't want to imagine. Oh that. my God. That would be, that would be awesome. So here's the thing is the T. The T is for tie it all together and to-dos. So tie it all together. So what do we mean by tie it all together is I'm going to look at the schedule and if I've got a to-do, somebody to call like, hey, listen, you want to do lunch on Friday because I'm already going to be in the area or whatever it may be, then I'm going to get those done. The other thing is with the schedule, I'm going to line up all of my outfits for the entire week. I knew I was doing this very important webinar today. So you know what? A, I bought, blocked off the hour before this just in case, right? I mean, it's like, let's get Tara on, let's get Polly on, let's, your team, Tristan, by the way, was phenomenal. They, they were phenomenal setting this up. I really didn't like you very much before <laughs> I set this up, but it is amazing, like, how your team is set. I'm just kidding. I love you. You know that. But here's the thing. So, the first thing is I'm going to line up my outfits, but I'm, and, and this is spread to the family. It's amazing how good stuff is contagious as well as the bad, bad stuff is contagious. The good stuff is contagious. So you know what? My wife, outfits all arranged for the week. She knows exactly what she's wearing and it matches the day. And I will tell you, Friday, I'm not doing any interviews. Oh, that's not true. We just booked Kevin Harrington on a referrals podcast. So I apologize for that. I will be dressing up on Friday, but I was going to say, I may be in pajamas all day Friday. And I was going to make everybody jealous, but now I can't do that. So here's the thing. My son. So my son has, he has what he's wearing throughout the day and the week, but also he has practice on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So guess what? He has what he's wearing laid out right next to it is full baseball gear, right? Baseball pants, undershirt, under sliding shorts, uh, so long socks, cleats, and hat, and everything else that makes up for the baseball. Mm -hmm. So he's ready. All the decisions for what we're going to wear have, be, have been aligned with our schedule, the family schedule, and the weather. So then all the meals are laid out, and Sherry went shopping Sunday night, 
and she got a few of the things that we were missing. Well, if you go to our refrigerator, you will see Tupperware in there. And guess what? It's got spaghetti for Friday night. Max has a game on Saturday. One of the best pre pregame meals ever. Friday night is going to be a big bowl of spaghetti with meat sauce. And he's going to eat that. And he knows he's eating right for his Saturday tournament games, right? So it's one of those where, uh, and here's the other thing. Max gets hungry. He doesn't go say, Mom, I'm hungry, or Dad, I'm hungry, because I'd go, you're going hungry. I'm sorry to hear that, son. But it's like he goes to the refrigerator, and he grabs his, his snack and doesn't even have to think about it. And if he wants to eat at 1 when I eat at 11, then guess what? He eats at 1. He eats when he can. So the other thing, too, we find out what he likes and doesn't like, because if there's a Tupperware left over at the end of the week, it's probably something he doesn't like. And I will tell you, my son doesn't like protein bars, which is killing me right now. But okay, that's more than you wanted to know. Now, <laughs> with the other tie it all together is, you know, if we have outfits for working out, then guess what? We need to have the shorts and shirt. And on buys and tries day, we're going to wear a what, Tristan? I have no idea. Tank top. Come on, dude. Well, I, don't, I don't wear you tank don't top. You go to the gym in a t-shirt when you're doing buys and tries i wore a sweater when i go to the to the gym i just don't you know i oh just want to show so off true oh my god that was today it it was so cold it wasn't even funny they had it like 65 in there and it was like man that's you know right what? good thing i'm just walking. I'm talking about good thing i'm just walking today so you know and on leg day right are you gonna wear the sweats the sloppy sweats no you got to see the definition coming in Right, so you wear the shorts. I'm going for yoga pants. Arnold, Schwar Arnold Schwarzenegger on leg, leg days, he would always wear sweats that he cut off at the knees because his calves were always a weakness. So he always had his focus on the calves during leg day. So he'd never walk out of leg day without working calves because he saw his calves all the time. And as we all know, Arnold that's, did pretty, that's pretty well with working out. Well, I, I have a question for Paul. What? No, I'm not. Oh, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Paul, what do you wear on leg day? What do I wear? I wear sweatpants. <laughs> I just wanted to know. That's I, don't want to, I don't want anybody to see how dangerous my legs are. So when, oh! I get in, when I get them in close, I can trip them and take them down for the triangle. You know what I'm <laughs> that's what it's all about. <laughs> I have to tell you that him wearing sweatpants rather than him wearing like short shorts really makes me happy right now. I just want everybody to know that. So I love it. now Tara wearing short shorts, working out right on leg day, far different, far different. I, and there we go. Right. So here's the thing. We're going to tie it all together and we're going to do to do's. And I will tell you, it is amazing how looking at the week ahead, I mean, just like this, like I knew this was coming. And it's like, I could do this on my own, it, maybe, right? I might struggle. I might slur a little. I might, you know, but it's like, you know what? I could do it on my own. Or, you know what? Tara is kicking butt with the Sunday night ritual. And Polly is kicking butt with the nightly ritual. I could have them on. And guess what? Sunday night's like, hey, you guys want to be on? Yeah. So I can be proactive. I can be better than if I wasn't looking at the week ahead and being so dang reactive. Life is reactive as it is. We need to be more proactive if we can. And the other thing that this prevents is something called decision fatigue. The more decisions you make, the worse decisions you're going to make. So guess what? The less decisions, the better decisions. And I think there's been more divorces caused by what do you want for dinner? than money. I really believe that. Because it's like, by the end of the day, it's like, what do you want for dinner? It becomes, what the, just make something, dear God. Like, let, or it's like, what do you want to eat tonight? I don't know, what do you want to eat tonight? I don't know, what do you want to eat tonight? I don't know, what do you want to eat tonight? I don't know, what do you want to eat tonight? Right, and it's like nine o'clock before somebody actually decides, you know? Yeah. So it's one of those where the, the, the best decision is a pre-decision. The best time to decide is before you're in the moment. And that's the truth. I got that from quarterbacking in high school is I knew where I was throwing before the play came. Could you imagine having to react 
during being a quarterback and just like, right? But no, I, I could read the safety or I read the outside linebacker. If the linebacker goes in, I'm going to throw it out. If the linebacker goes out, I'm going to throw it to the end. And life is easy. And I set 22 records, you know, for a little guy. It was all good. So it was one of those where, you know, the best decision is a, is a decision you make when you have the time to make the decision, right? Slow process, fast process. Sunday night is slow process because you know what during the week is? It's fast process. You've got to make decisions very quickly and you've got, you've got to make things happen. So that's just, that's just a Sunday night ritual. We could, I mean, boom, right? Yeah. So Tara, what did I miss or what can you add to the Sunday night ritual portion of this? As, and by the way, I've got to give Tara the trooper award. She has been feeling sick all week, which looking at her, you're like, no way. But the thing is, is she's been feeling ill. She got her COVID-19 test yesterday. She got her results back today. She is. Negative. I, I, it's just like, that's such a weird word to hear. I from actually, you. I actually wish I was positive just so I can get it over with. <laughs> or become Sweet. immune. Like once you have yeah. it, you're, you're more immune to it. But anyway, I, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, by the way. I know. So Tara, let's talk Sunday night ritual. So Sunday night, you're all relaxed. It's seven or eight o'clock in the evening. What, what are you doing at that time? I, I think it's really important too, to mention that the Sunday night ritual, I feel like we, we put so much importance on the morning ritual when it's really the nighttime that is just as important because it sets you up for your morning. Um, and I, I don't want to give away too much because you just kind of went through most of it. And, and the sweet acronym is basically is, is basically what we follow. However, my favorite one is probably the weekly preview. So when we look at our schedule, right? So it's taking your, your, your current schedule that you have, looking at what are my biggest wins for the week. And I love sometimes when I sit there and think about what were my wins for the week. And I'm like, oh, I didn't, really didn't have any. And then when I really dig down deep, even if a small win is, 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 is a big win, or it, it just it, sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit. So I look at the biggest wins, like what were some major accomplishments that I accomplished from this week? I've been sick for the last week, and I still had some good wins. Um, and so I look at those and then I do an after action review and I look at the week before I, I, I thought, thought of three big rocks that I wanted to tackle for that week. So by looking at that, I look at, okay, so how far did I get by tackling those three big rocks that I set as intentionally the previous Sunday? I look, how far did I get? Well, what percentage did I actually accomplish and what worked and what did it and what will I keep? What will I improve? What will I start or what will I stop doing? I can be fully transparent and say that one of the biggest things that came up on one of the things that what didn't work or what I needed to stop doing through the last court, the, the whole lockdown was I found that uh, drinking was <laughs> drinking wine was, uh, was, was a big one that said, all right, Terry, you got, you got to stop just a little bit <laughs> just because I didn't want it to get in the way of being productive. So I actually came up with a solution, which was I was not allowed to just start drinking wine until I did 10 power notes. And so then I could reward myself after that um, at the end of the day. And then after, so after I look at what the back, the last three rocks were from the previous week and what did I do to accomplish those, I look at the weekly overview. So I list important events, deadlines, tasks, anything that's important that's coming up in the week. And I break them down between personal and professionally. And once I break them down, I go one step further and I write out which days will I be completing these things. Because I think it's important, if we don't take care of ourselves personally, how are we supposed to be successful professionally? Mm -hmm. It goes hand in hand. Um, and then by then I look at, okay, so what are my three rocks that are going to be coming up for this, this week coming up? So I look at my schedule as a preview, which I know that um, our amazing uh, worksheet that you have that you're working on is going to show that. And so I look at those three things that are going to be coming up to advance my goals and projects for the week. So I know that I can consider my week a win if I have accomplished or at least put some momentum into those three big rocks for the week. And then lastly for that, just, and this is all wrapped into just the schedule for the week and kind of just the reflection. And the last thing that I do within that is look at the self care planner. So I brainstorm in certain categories and then I schedule my rejuvenation based on those daily agendas for the week in each. And those ones will be, what am I, what's my um, self, what's my self care for sleeping? Meaning 
what nights, uh, what am I going to plan for actually being able to go to sleep or putting mask on facial mask three times a week or, you know, something like that and eating moving, meaning how much am I going to be moving this week? What's my, what's my intentions for my goals this week to be moving around my connections. So what connections and a lot of it, a lot of it was personal because I'm such a workaholic that I sometimes tend to neglect my um, personal relationships. Mm. And then also, what am I going to be doing to relax? Like we got to relax, especially when uh, we have such high energy. I know Polly's like me, you're like me, Tristan's got it too. We're such uh, go, 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 go that we actually tend to sometimes forget to just sometimes just relax and take care of ourselves. Mm. So by just, and that's just wrapped up into one baby section of, <laughs> of the schedule. <laughs> and we have the full plan for that and, and, and tracking that and going back and reflecting on that has been so powerful. I mean, the, the Sunday night ritual I learned from you um, and I've been doing it consistently for two years. Anybody that follows me on social media knows. And I would say that it is a game changer, especially the outfit plannings. And it's crazy because I still plan the outfits all through the lockdown. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And, and I will tell you that the thing, I'm, I'm really surprised Tara didn't bring this up because this is such a powerful thing for the, for the two of us, for sure. And I, I think Polly's in the same boat. I know Mark Zuckerberg's in the same boat. I know that, uh, I know that uh, Steve Jobs, you know, rest in peace, uh, Gary Keller, some of you Gary might Keller. have heard that name, right? So what do they all have in common, Tara? They all wear a uniform. Exactly. <laughs> so I've been wearing a uniform consistently for two years. It's a little, actually a little over two years. And um, that has been such a game changer because it's so easy. You just wake up in the morning and it makes it actually save money because uh, I know exactly what colors I need to pick out. Uh, and so it, that, that one's been a game changer. And I can't wait to share uh, more about that on our 30-day journey too. Yeah, 100% is, is pick your uniform, right? So uh, Tristan, I see you a lot of times you're wearing black, you know, and I wear black almost every single day. I wear a black undershirt, I think every day. So it's one of those where if you know what you're wearing ahead of time and you just pick your uniform, then guess what? It's all done for you. You don't have to decide. You don't have to make decisions about what to wear. Because you know what? Do you really want to spend your energy, especially in the morning? deciding on what to wear and then you realize you wore the wrong thing because you went with what and, and then you look at the schedule and you look at the weather anyway and then you're behind then you're reactive then you're late and then things just snowball the wrong way you know what it is so nice to wake up put on what you know you need to wear and be done and ready and you know what you're prepared for anything so I'm a, I'm a huge believer in the uniform. I'm a huge believer in picking out, like, what is your look and just own it, go with it, and run with it. So I want to talk about the nightly ritual now because, you know, what I've discovered with the nightly ritual has been nothing short of earth shattering. So the, Tristan, did you have a comment on the Sunday night ritual before we went to the nightly ritual? Uh, no, I just wanted to talk about the, the uniform. Uh, just, yeah. just to point out other things, uh, our presidents have had already uh, a set set clothing that they were going to wear for the next day. So it's, it's it really is a true thing. Decision fatigue does happen with the smallest things, right? And you want to save you want to save those thoughts and decisions that are crucial for actually things that matter, not what you're going to wear, right? Mm -hmm. So just automate as much as you can. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah, uh, I want to, add to that, Mike. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Like, so, so the other thing is that when you actually have to make a decision, and you've got two, whether it's like, you know, what, what am I going to wear? Um, I'm supposed to be going to the gym, but what, what should I wear? You, you will choose the easier thing to do rather than the thing that you want to do. So sometimes when you're not motivated to actually do what's good for yourself, you'll choose the easier route, which will then give you a reason to just say, well, I never, I never got to that, so then I'll do it later. And later never, ever comes because it's like you run out of time. But truly, you never really run out of time to just choose to do something other something different with the time that you have and that's why you always run out of time when you don't do the things that you know that you're supposed to do 
Yeah, that's such a great point is when decision fatigue kicks in, we tend to either do the thing that doesn't require thinking or we do the easy thing. We, we want to all default to not having to think. That's, that's honestly, that's the problem, right? And why is that? Because we only have so much energy to think and make big decisions. So guess what? When we, we, we take the time and we're proactive with it, we don't choose the easy thing. We choose the right thing. I'm not saying choose the hard thing. I'm just saying choose the right thing. And when we choose ahead of time, we choose the right thing. So, yeah. So it, it, it's one, I think, yeah, it's like some people are commenting about willpower. And here's the thing. Willpower won't. Like willpower is overrated. It is overpowered. Hustle is overrated. Grinding it out is overrated. I truly believe that. I truly believe that. What if you had energy all the time? Think about it. So I'm going to help you with your energy when it comes to the battery. Here's the thing, right? If you wake up and your battery is at 20%, are you going to have a good day? If your phone, when you go check your phone in the morning, you forgot to plug it in, it's at 20%. Is your phone gonna have a good day? Is your phone gonna work like it should? No, but what if you wake up and your phone is 100%? You plug in your phone, why don't you plug in yourself? And that's what sleep is. Sleep is the way to plug in and recharge. So how do we maximize our sleep? It's with a nightly ritual, pre-sleep or bedtime ritual. D is for dim time. And I will tell you, if you have kids, and you have been going through the quarantine, you will have found that dim time is the saving grace or else your son is up till 2 a.m. doing Fortnite. I'm just saying, why am I just saying? Because I experienced that one night. So here's the thing, dim time is about 30 minutes before you go to bed. So I will tell you, we got together as a family and it was like, all right, what time do we wanna do dim time? And Max said 10 o'clock, he wanted he's 11. He wanted dim time to be 10. And then Sherry, I didn't care, to be honest with you. I can go to sleep at any time. I know what to do in the morning. I know how to make it happen. So it was like, all right. And Sherry goes, I want to do nine o'clock. And that makes sense. She's an early riser and, and made sense that she'd want to do nine. So I said, all right, here's what we'll do. How about we do 930 with our dim time, right? So Max, you give a little, Sherry, you give a little, and I didn't care. So I just wanted one. So guess what? Dim time is at 9.30 and we're going to be lights out at 10 o'clock. Well, guess what? You go to bed at 10 o'clock, you can get up at six. You can get up at 6.30. You can get up at seven really easily. So here's the thing. The first thing is a dim time. Technology goes off. Phone goes off. No computer. Like the, in fact, lights off except for lamps, candles, that kind of thing. You're going to truly live the dim time. So dim time means it's time to get ready for bed. Women have known this forever. Like they get ready for bed. Like getting, like when I first heard getting ready for bed, I was like, you're getting ready for bed? Like, I'm like, you know what a man does? A man like collapses wherever he's at. And that's the bed. Like couch equals bed, floor, bed, bed, sometimes bed. Women, they got it right all these years. You should get ready for bed. So smart. Women are so smart. When did we ever I know. like, I know. yeah, it's just like so easy. So we're going to get ready for bed. So here's the thing is dim time. Technology's off, phone's off, social media is off, news is off. Here's the thing. This is what, just what I do. What you do is what you do. I do me, you do you, it's all good. But I'm telling you something else. No TV in the bedroom. Your bedroom is for two things only, sleep and the other thing. Michael, what's the other thing? It's sex, Tristan. Okay, I like, swatted Thank you. That's I mean, it is like, you know, I'm an acronym guy, but sometimes you just need three letters. You know what I'm saying? So here's the thing. <laughs> it is, yeah, somebody said sickness, sex, and sleep. But it's like, dude, no more sickness. Like, I'm not, yeah. Right, but I get it. I thank you for so here's the thing. And that is the thing. No kids in your bedroom anymore. Like you have a master bedroom, no kids in there, right? Have a nursery, have their own bedroom. Like it is like 
their domain. I remember when I was a little kid, if I tried to go into the master bedroom, like it was like sacred ground. Like I couldn't even open the door. And there is something amazing about that. I just want you to know that have your own space. And the smaller your home, the more important that is. So the R is for read. And I am a huge, huge believer in reading at night. I, I just believe, and don't read too much. Read for about five minutes. Read for about seven minutes. Don't get into the long-term novel, right? Read for five to seven minutes. Just let it, just let it happen, right? So R is for read. E is the one that I have to tell you I'm the most excited about. Is for evaluate. Evaluate. We're going to evaluate our day. And I'm going to tell you something. I have the Sweet Dreams nightly journal front cover behind me right now. And I will tell you, I, I've never been so excited about a book as I am about the Sweet Dreams Nightly Journal. And that includes 7L, Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents, the 30 Mornings Journal. Like, because here's the thing that I've been, I've been doing this and I'm on fire. Like, is I take out the trash at night. And what I mean by that is I take out the trash in my head at night. The evaluate portion allows us, and I talk about something called the great eights, and eights is A-T-E-S. So evaluate is an eight, right? So evaluate. So great. What was great about today? What do I need to celebrate? Who do I need to congratulate? How would I rate my day on a scale of zero to 10? What would it take to make it a 10? And so I have these eights, and you're going to just fill in the eights. By the time you're done, and by the way, what do I need to eliminate? What do I need to decimate? What do I need to regulate? What do I need, you know, who do I need to delegate to? You know, what do I need to delegate? Um, who do I need to relegate, right? And that kind of thing. Who do I need to elevate? And so on and so forth. So it's the grade eights. And sometimes you're going to have nothing. It's like, what do I need to delegate? The answer may be nothing. It's okay. But you're, you're taking out the trash out of your mind and you're clearing it. That's why so many people toss and turn is because of their worries. It's because of their worries. It's because of, they worry about the client. They worry about their son or daughter. They were, guess what? Jot it down. That's what you're worried about. You jot it down, you put it on a piece of paper, it's out of here and it's on paper, it's in the nightly journal. Just that one act alone has gone from making my sleep worry sleep or sleeping like a baby as Polly and I talked about earlier today, which means everybody says like, oh man, I slept like a baby. It's like, why would you wanna sleep like a baby? They sleep for two hours, roll around and then they cry right? And I did that early in COVID-19. I'm not going to suggest sleeping like a baby to anybody. So here's the thing is take out the trash with evaluate, fill out the grade eights. Sometimes you're not going to have an answer for decimate or regulate or whatever it may be. Uh, appreciate, you're probably always going to have something. Congratulate, you're probably going to have something. Uh, celebrate, you're hopefully going to have something. Um, great, you're gonna have something. What was great about today? What did, educate, what did you learn today, right? So then the A, and this is very important, realize we're doing this in a 30 minute window. So very short period. I'm doing dim, I'm reading a little bit, I'm going through the nightly journal, evaluating and, and going through the grade eights, and then I'm gonna have my bedtime affirmation. Affirm is the A, affirm. So I'm going to have a bedtime affirmation along with my affirmations and all the research shows affirmations in the morning are great, but affirmations at night can be life changing and game changing. Do the affirmations before you go to sleep before, because you know what, that's where they get manifested. That's where they get created. That's where they get attracted now. So affirm and then the M lights out. I'm then going to do the M and the M and everybody on here probably knows I'm a huge fan of this is for meditate. Speaking of grade eights, I'm not sure if there's a greater eight than maybe appreciate, but it, meditate would be right there. And meditate 
is not a guided meditation where you're going to YouTube. And I mean, we have those. We have done those during the morning ritual. This meditation is just a pre-sleep meditation, breathing techniques. And I will tell you, it's just a way to get yourself into that mode. And then the S of dreams is sleep, is sleep. Go to sleep, go to sleep. So dreams, dim time, read, evaluate your day, think ahead to the next day, affirm, meditate, sleep, implement this, and you will tap into the power of sleep. You'll wake up recharged, refreshed, and rejuvenated and ready for the day. And uh, I will tell you that you combine the Sunday night ritual with the nightly ritual, and it's going to change your life. Yeah, can I can I touch on something there on sleep and and really stress just to yeah to give some feedback in regards to how it how it applies scientifically to people yes. so they know so obviously there's there's evidence that chronic stress is is connected to to sleep right obviously non sleep that's right and what happens is with chronic stress the more you study about stress and sleep you realize that stress rewires the, the way that your brain is, is wired. Mm. And so there's a study that was done on the Harvard Health blog, and I don't know which one it is, so you'd have to Google it. But it said something along the lines of scientists have learned that the animals that experience prolonged stress have less activity in the parts of the brain that handle higher order tasks. So, for example, the free frontal, uh, sorry, prefrontal, Prefrontal. Can you repeat that? Can you say that ten times in a row? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Prefrontal cortex. Cortex. The yeah. part that makes us human. That's the one, and yep. uh, and more activity in the primitive parts of the brain mm -hmm. that are focused on survival. That's that's what happens when you're when you're stressed. See, for some reason, when you're super stressed, you focus a lot on these parts of the brain that are helping you to survive, survive. And it makes those parts stronger. But the, the challenge is it makes the other parts weaker and gives them less attention. Those parts that you're talking about, which is the higher order task. So it's essential that we build part of the brain that's designed to handle the rest of the tax, tasks that are complex. And when we don't sleep enough and we, when we don't meditate, it doesn't give attention to that rest, to the rest of our brain that we need. And the cool part about meditation is that it's actual, actually proven to show that it relieves a lot of the stress that we have on ourselves because we're giving time for our brains to think, right? To process. So I love the list, man. That's awesome. It gives, I'll tell you, I love what you said there because I will tell you, my car was stolen over the, over the quarantine, right? So we went to a baseball park, and uh, you, we were hitting in a cage 100 feet away. Now, it did have a net around the cage, so you couldn't see out of it. They obviously knew that. So they, they took off in my, you know, GL450 SUV, and I remember afterwards, so I, they were carrying the bags, and then I had to grab the tees, and I was coming up after them. And they both were kind of looking at each other funny and, and looked back to me. And I was like, no, 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 the keys are in it. You can, you can go ahead and put the stuff away. And Sherry looked at Max and looked back at me and she goes, uh, no, we can't. I was like, what? And she goes, no, 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 it, it, it's gone. I go, oh, is it gone? Like, and like, it was gone. So we went up there and it's like, it's gone. And listen, I could have blown up. I could have been mad. I could have. But I have been meditating for a few years now, and I was able to tap into that peace and calm very quickly. So instead of going ballistic in front of my 11-year-old son, I was like, oh, is it gone? Okay, I guess we probably need to call the police. Let's make sure it wasn't towed. And let's make, you know, so I ca we called the police, 911, and calmly went through what happened. And they were like, well, we'll check and see if it's towed. It wasn't towed. We canceled all of our credit cards by, cause I'm an idiot. And I left my wallet and my keys in the car. I should have probably just put like a thousand bucks of cash in there just to round it all off, but I didn't do that. 
but it was just it was just like she, I was calm, so Sherry was calm, so Max was calm. It was like you know what? It's a freaking car. It if Max was in it, might have been a lot different, but he wasn't. It's just a car, right? So it, it was like meditation is very powerful. But Tristan, I'm telling you, there's meditation and then there's pre-sleep meditation. And, and the sequencing of dim, read, reads educational, right? And then evaluate is taking out the trash, getting rid, affirm, set the positive intention for the next day, meditate, get yourself into the beta, theta, and, and, and delta zones of sleep, and then sleep. And what happens is that you will sleep so well and you will wake up with brilliance. You'll wake up on fire. I, I, how do I know this? I've been implementing this. Like it, I'm waking up on fire. So anyway, I, it's, it's, uh, you know, this, this isn't, this isn't, and here's the other thing. 72% of the people in the world will relate to night owls. They, they say they're night, 72% say they're night owls versus early birds. But guess what we've been trying to do for years? We've been trying to tell er, uh, night owls that they're idiots for not being early birds. But the truth is, is that, you know what? Night owls are just as effective and in some cases more effective than the early birds. Why are we trying to change night owls to be early birds? Why don't we maximize what night owls can do? And that's what the nightly rituals do versus, you know, we're, some of us are just geared for, for night, right? Period. Polly, what have you been doing with your nightly ritual? So, let me just make sure. Okay, there you go. You're on. So, yeah. All right. So, um, my nightly ritual starts obviously from from Sunday and what that whole schedule is, and then what I do is I just make sure that about thirty day, thirty minutes before, I always drink a tall glass of water. That's the biggest thing is staying hydrated. Because uh, when you wake up and dehydrated, you don't drink, it kind of will affect the rest of your day. And actually, I do want to bring something up. What you just talked about, what you heard was my alarm. What I've actually done is I set my alarm every five minutes before the hour to adjust my attitude to what I'm thinking because we do have a high stress level job with solving problems to ensure that my problem from maybe what had happened earlier doesn't carry in. And I learned that from jujitsu because while we were actually training and doing MMA, my coach would have us do math problems while we were in the middle of the round and scream out like, what's your, what's your son's name? Or what's four plus four, or two times two, so that we were constantly in the cognitive thinking instead of getting into that stressful thinking where we were just thinking survival, which means just start swinging for the fences and throwing whatever at, at it so that it would just- What's well, eight times eight? To pull yourself back oh, and say, work. okay, here it is. Here's the problem. I'm going to solve the problem. I'm not in the survival mode, which then you make wrong decisions. And that's how people get knocked out. But so what I do is I do that. I drink the, the, uh, the water and then I think about my perfect day. So I also have a perfect day that I set up. So I go, what would my perfect day be like drinking enough water um, in my morning ritual would be taking a cold shower stretching, drinking my coffee, doing some reading, drinking some water, and then my workout, which is my run, coming back, taking a cold shower, uh, getting dressed, getting to work, how many contacts that I uh, make at work, eating a healthy lunch, um, training jujitsu or, tra or networking or doing something like that, uh, having a healthy dinner, and then into my nightly ritual. So when I lay down, when I get all that stuff done, I'll take my water, I'll bring it to my bedside, and then I'll kind of, I'll get my journal and I'll evaluate, okay, what was my day? from one to 10, did I do all of those things? And it's not a, it's not a win or a fail, but what, it, what I do is I do something that I call chain goals. So what I do is I go, okay, well, I know that my day today was a five, so I wanna do another five. Because if you just do what you did yesterday and you put them together, it synergizes. You'll be better than not doing anything or doing worse today if you didn't do as good as yesterday, right? So I don't focus on making a perfect day. What I focus in on is trying to make sure that I connect them together. And as they connect and they stay consistent, whether it's just running or even eating a healthy lunch every day, what will happen is I will get more and more committed to the actual perfect 
day because then I'll go, I'm, I'm seeing these great results and I was only at a six, man, I got to do a seven tomorrow. And then what eventually happens is you create that habit and you do what I call rewire. You rewire yourself instead of taking this huge stress on as I've got to create a habit in 30 days. Like don't do that because one day you skip one day, you'll end up skipping two days and then you'll just throw it all out the window. So then I, uh, I make sure that I set up my workout and all of my clothes are set out on Sunday. So I do all of my work outfits. I wear a suit every day. On Thursday, I have something that I call Labor Day that I do with my team. Um, so we, whether it's mulching some yards, pressure washing, doing things like that, cutting lawns for our, uh, our clients. Last year, I did 105 transactions as a single agent with my team of two, and they ended up pulling, they were newer agents, they ended up doing about five of those transactions, but we were able to cut lawns, build decks, do fences because of how we had it all scheduled out, right? And you go like, oh, I don't got time for that. I did 105 transactions and still did all of that because I had my rituals and my schedule. Then um, I make sure all of my, my clothes are ready. I take my hot shower, I brush my teeth, I tuck myself in and then I, re I do my review, my review on what am I going to do tomorrow? Uh, what are the opportunities that are gonna be available to help me grow, prioritize them? Then I shut it down. Now, I, I actually read. So I, I'm not, I get tired when I read, so I'm not the best reader in the world, right? I can put my hands on people really well, but when it comes down to reading, I get really tired, right? So what I've done is I actually buy the book and then I buy the audio and I listen to the audio while I'm reading the book so that I can highlight the things that are important and trying to remember what that last line was. So that helps me get through the book. And so I commit to that. So now I am committed to reading a book a week at least. And I've got some smaller books in there that I throw in that give me that extra like, oh, I got two in. But it's that time that I can find to reading. And that's kind of what I do for my meditation. And then at the end, the biggest thing is I declare See, I don't make affirmations. It's not the affirmation of independence, right? It's the declaration of independence. You declare it, you say it once, that's it. Don't, you don't need to say it over and over and over and over. If it's really what you want to do, you say it once and then have the faith that you're going to do it because you want to do it. You have a purpose. Find the why. Don't just say it in the mirror. Find out why it's important to you. If you find out why it's important, you only need to say it once and write it down and stay committed. And as you saw with Tara, I have post-its all over my bathroom mirror when I'm waking up in the morning of what I need to do to remind myself. It's right in my face. This is what I told myself I'm going to do. I'm not going to let me down. Not only am I not going to let me down, I have to be the best version for the people that I have in my proximity because that is my power and I want to give and give uh, when I am at my best. And so then I also do my, my, my last thing is, and, and this is something that I do, uh, again, like Michael had said, um, you do what you do, I do what I do, but I pray. But when I pray, I, I give gratitude. I thank, I thank for all of my problems. I thank you for the opportunity to have this situation that I have to solve because I know for a fact that you would not put it on my plate if I could not handle it. I also know that you do not intend or put any, you, all you want me to do is grow. You don't want me to struggle. So whatever this is, this problem, it's an opportunity. So I look at all of my objections as golden moments to learn. Whenever I'm in real, in real estate, whenever you get an objection, you know what? You shouldn't look at it like, how do I solve this objection? Or what is the talk track? Really what you should do is educate. Because what you didn't do is you didn't answer the question before it became a question. Now you're having to actually deal with the objection. So those are what we call golden moments. So I'm always, I don't ask for anything. I don't say, you know, God, I would like this. This is how I look at it. I don't tell God my problems. I tell my problems how big my God is and they get out of the 
way. And then we just crush it. And then we wake up in the morning and we get after it. You know, it's too easy. Done. Have a nice day. <laughs> he just gave a webinar in seven minutes. That was amazing. He literally covered everything he did in the day, everything at night. And that was awesome. So, I mean, you can tell why I love the guy, right? So, you know, I think that's the, that's the big thing, right? That, that's what this does. It, it, it sets people on fire. And, you know, here's the thing, right? Is it's one of those where, how would you like to learn from these two and myself how to implement the sweet dreams as far as the two rituals, right? And we have created a 30-day challenge course that is 30 days. I'm, here's the thing. Do you want to do a year of coaching every other day? Or do you want to get a year's coaching in 30 days, right? And the bottom line is we found that, I found that like in my life, when I had the biggest difference in my life was when I had coaches who were there Sunday through Thursday or Monday through Friday. Somebody where the coach was there every day. So we're doing a 30-day challenge course. We're going to do a Sunday night ritual with you on Sunday evening. We're going to do a nightly ritual with you every evening, Sunday through Thursday. Friday and Saturday, you stay up as late as you want, you do whatever you want, and then Sunday night, we're gonna meet again, go through the Sunday night ritual, help you create your own. This isn't about doing what I do, or Tara, or Polly. This is about you creating your ultimate Sunday night ritual and your ultimate nightly ritual. And the big thing that's awesome about this is you're all gonna get the Sweet Dreams Nightly Journal. The Sweet Dreams Nightly Journal, it's a 30-day journal, it, it is, like I said, I've been using this and it is, it is off the charts what you're going to tap into. It's very easy to get into this. It's not $500. You know, that, that's what the regular price has been for a long time for a lot of our courses. It's, it's $99. You just go to 30evenings.com. You get the whole month. What is that, like $3.30 a day? You know, it's one of those where we're, we're going to bring it in. You're going to get Polly. You're going to get Tara. You're going to get me coaching you on the Sunday night ritual and the nightly ritual so that you can make it your own. You're going to live so proactively instead of reactively, and you're going to seriously set yourself up and your family up for health, wealth, and happiness. And listen, I, I don't want to make this a sales pitch, but I, I'd be stupid. And here's the thing. It's not free. And why isn't it free? Because here's the thing. You wouldn't show up. And guess what? You wouldn't learn. If we charge you a little bit, it's amazing. People will show up for 99 bucks and they'll show up every session. And we have these little rewards for perfect attendance. And if you only miss one day. So it's one of those where, you know what? Can you change your life in 30 evenings? The answer is yes, you can. Can you achieve your dreams in 30 days? The answer is yes, you can. Hopefully we can help you. You can go to 30evenings.com and you can put in the lab coat. Uh, code. And guess what? You are in for $99. 30evenings.com. <laughs> and I want to leave with one thing, guys. Just because you're struggling doesn't mean you're failing. And so that's what we're also going to be here for throughout this whole time. You're going to struggle. That is the great part about it. Like after the struggle, if there's no struggle, then you, you don't feel the reward of winning and overcoming. And at the end of this, the biggest thing is you will infect so many people, not like Tara Carter with whatever she's got. I'm not in that way, but you will infect people because they will be attracted to you. You will be on fire. The whole world will watch you burn because here's the thing. You're going to want to make sure that you seek to be worth knowing rather than well-known. And this is where you need to show up to be worth knowing. Because when you're done with this, you're gonna be on fire, fire. So I was just told that you do not need a lab coat code, that the 30evenings.com is already being adjusted for all of those that are on this uh, webinar now that you're watching it live. So that uh, if you do watch this later and you notice that it's at 297, just let us know and we will make sure that the lab coat discount is applied and you are able to go for the full 30 days and get the Sweet Dreams nightly ritual and the Facebook group, private Facebook group, for $99. So, Tristan, any questions on any of this? I, here's what I hoped. I hope that people take this 
and they have enough that they can do it on their own, right? And, and here's what I don't, right? They have four options, right? One option is do nothing. One is they could do it on their own. You know, one is they, they can do it the traditional way or four is they could do it with our help, right? And I hope at the very least that they do it, right? Yeah, I, I always find that it's, it's a lot more powerful when you do it in a community setting because then you're, you're held accountable and you see things through a lot easier and faster. So, dude, thanks yep. for doing this. I, I love this, man. Yeah. yeah. Just so you know, if your spouse, here's the thing, your spouse can take it with you for $99. Here's the other thing. This is not just a real estate thing. I know many of you know me from the real estate world, but I want to change everyone's lives. If you have a family of four, all four of you can get on Sunday night as one for $99. So I just want you to know that this is a scenario where you may want to bring your spouse on board online with you to maximize the impact of, of what we're doing here. And it's still just $99. So it, it, it's, uh, I, you know, I, bottom line is, is I want to make change. I want to help people change. I want people to have what I've gotten from, from sweet dreams, you know? So, and I, I want to say thank you to Tara and Polly for, for coming on and, and uh, sharing their, their aspects and what they've done with this and, and their passion for the nightly ritual as well. I love it. Well, thanks for being on Tara. Tara can't see you here. Let me turn on my, my other screens. Cause uh, I've got, I've got Michael on the big screen. There we go. Tara, thanks for being on. I appreciate you, Paul. Uh, that was awesome, too. Thank you very much. And this is my first time really meeting and engaging with Paul, so that was good. Oh, you're going to love him. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I'm glad you, you two got the chance to, to meet and, and, and make it happen. Uh, there was a question on DIM mean. DIM is for DIM time, which means technology's off, the phone's off, TVs are off, video games are off. And lights, in many cases, are dimmed. So it, it, it's more of a, all right, let's, let's get ready for bed. Is there some talking going on during that time? Yes, there might be. There's, you know, there, there might be some winding down. Uh, there might be, I mean, I've had people who dim time means turns off the technology, have a glass of wine. Listen, it is, it is what it is, right? So yeah. I, I hope I, like I said, I, I don't want to make it a sales pitch. I don't want people to think I'm selling anything here. It's more of, I want to help. And I know that if I charge you $99, you're going to show up for 30 days. And at the end of 30 days, you're going to be on fire like everybody else on this, on this webinar. So. I love it. Well, thanks for being on Michael. Thanks Tara. Thanks Paul. And everybody go to the links there. It's also on our Facebook page. So we'll leave a pin to the top. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks Tristan.